Protests against police brutality have been sweeping across the world. Cities have been set on fire, and fresh questions have been raised about the nature of modern policing. Ukraine is no stranger to protests, with one of the most well-known protests, the Euromaidan in 2014, forcing out a sitting president and changing the course of Ukrainian history. Despite the Euromaidan, weekly protests against the police, or more specifically, the men in charge of them, Minister of Internal Affairs Arsena Vakov, have become a commonplace occurrence. But why is Minister of Vakov so disliked by many within Ukraine, and is this anger justified? Let's take a look at the man nicknamed Ukraine's Grey Cardinal, and dig into exactly what and why so many in Ukraine would be glad to see him go. The 56-year-old Avakov has been a fixture of Ukraine's often fractious politics for decades. He burst out into the public spotlight in 2006 after a post-independence career as a banking board member. First a member of the Kharkiv City Council, he then joined Viktor Yushchenko's presidential campaign in 2004 and remained a member of that party until 2010. He then switched allegiances to Yulia Tymoshenko's Batkivshina party, and it was during that period that he was charged with corruption, specifically illegally transferring land, which, prior to the adoption of the land market reform bill this year, was highly illegal. This charge saw him flee the country for Italy, landing him on Interpol's most wanted list. Italian police at the time placed him under house arrest pending extradition. But Avakov managed to worm his way out of those charges by being elected a full MP in the Ukrainian parliament on the Bakhtivshina list. At the time, MPs had full criminal immunity, and his election meant that his charges were dropped and nullified. He stayed on as an MP until the fateful days of the Euromaidan protests in 2014, when his political star shifted from being just another MP to becoming one of the most powerful men in the land. After fugitive President Viktor Yanukovych fled Ukraine for Russia, abdicating his role, Avakov was appointed as acting interior minister following the collapse of the Yanukovych administration and government. And despite saying that the position would be temporary, it actually became permanent following the election of Ukraine's fifth president, Petro Poroshenko. And Avakov has managed to keep his ministerial role since then through various government changes and even another presidential election which has led to some speculation that he may have some undue influence over the presidential office, regardless of who occupies it. One of these rumors, and perhaps the most persistent one, are speculations that he may have some sort of close relationship with right-wing organizational National Corps. During his tenure as Interior Minister, Avakov has placed a number of right-wing and nationalist figures into Ukraine's law enforcement apparatus, earning the ire of G7 ambassadors in a rebuke from Ukraine's chief rabbi. Avakov himself has admitted to personally knowing the head of the National Corps, Andrei Beletsky. However, no evidence has come to light so far about the rumor that the National Corps is an extension of Avakov's personal power or that he personally funds the Nationalist Party. But that's far from the only reason for some Ukrainians to dislike Avakov. One very common critique is that Ukraine's vaunted police reform meant to turn the country's old Soviet legacy Militsa into a modern police force has failed in the eyes of some commentators. And they lay the blame squarely at Avakov's feet. And the police force has had large failings to justify that belief. A number of very high profile cases, including cases involving the murder of Euromaidan activists in 2014, have gone unpunished despite the six years that have passed since the protests. Protesters have often pointed at unresolved high-profile cases as reasons that Avakov is either corrupt or ineffective. There are a whole litany of cases that can point to as evidence the failed prosecution of security forces during the Euromaidan, the still unresolved murder of journalist Pavlo Sharmet, the murder of activist Katerina Khanzyuk, the gang shootout in Brovary, the rape of a woman at a police precinct in Kiev region, the murder of a five-year-old child in Kiev region by off-duty police officers, numerous attacks on Euromaidan activists and journalists. All of these cases, despite the time elapsed and ongoing trials or investigations, have yet to be concluded. Avakov, speaking at a recent session of Parliament, said in his defense that he was acting within his role. Я не буду робити те, що ви хочете, я буду робити те, що повинен робити. І те, що повинен робити, я зроблю. This was his response to an MP asking him to apologize for the murder of that five-year-old child. Yet what he must do seems to be a long time coming, as even that case remains open. 
and Ivankov is probably not too fearful of a recent bill, introduced by opposition party Quillis, to fire him from his post. He can count on the support of a majority of the ruling Servant of the People Party MPs, according to one such MP, and on the present support, as well as the support of his own ministry and of the Prosecutor General's office. At a recent triple protest held on June 5th, many participants commented that Avakov had been in the post for too long and was too entrenched, a legitimate concern in a country where long-serving politicians have carved out virtual fiefdoms for themselves, making it hard or even impossible to dislodge them even in proven cases of corruption. Потому що пора міняти цього вічного міністра, про який абсолютно зруйнував очікувану реформу. Не можна, щоб люди так довго сиділи на одній посаді. And while even one of these scandals could have led to a minister's resignation in a different country, Avakov seems intent on staying the course, regardless of whether or not justice is done in the many high-profile open cases under his purview. And as long as Avakov remains in office, there's no doubt that discontent with him will continue to seethe in Ukrainian society and that the protests will keep going.